Hi everyone, my name is Steph, this is The Novel Decon and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm really excited to be talking to you about my annotation process for books. This is something I have started filming more videos about recently here on my channel. I have a series which I'll leave the playlist linked on the screen where I am physically annotating a book and just doing a bit of a vlog style flip through for you guys as I am annotating. I find it really interesting. I like watching other people annotate books. I like hearing about their process and I'm enjoying it myself. So that's why that content is increasing. But in those videos, I don't spend heaps of time going over sort of the why, the how, the what, what I use and things like that, because that's not the point of those videos. So I thought I would put them all here in one place so that if anyone is interested in sort of my process, why I choose to do, why I choose to annotate, how I choose to annotate, you can find this video really easily. And I think I have done one of these in the past, but my process has changed a lot since then. So I thought that it was probably time for an update. So I figured I would probably start with the why. So why do I annotate books? The simple reason is I, at my very basic level of annotating, which is usually just using page flags, I love to collect quotes. I've always been fascinated by words, by phrases, by quotes that I read. And I just like documenting things that just stand out for me. You know, when you just read something and you just go, huh, I like to mark it because then I can come back to it at any point in time. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit later about how this process differs from book to book and series to series. But at its very base level, I just like collecting language. Like that's just something that I love to do. And I am not someone who finds writing an easy thing to do. It is not something that comes naturally to me. It is not something that I am inclined to do, particularly in terms of writing fiction. So collecting other things that people have just written makes me happy because I love language. I'm just, it, it's not my inclination to write like that. So at its base level, that's, that's exactly what it is. In terms of my professional life, in terms of teaching, I'm often reading a lot of professional readings. I have to annotate anyway for that because I, that's how I process the information. So I'm used to it and I'm used to marking up pages that are important or highlighting in books or writing in the margins or sticking post-it notes in and just writing all over them because that's what I need to do. So this is simply a transference of something that I do for my professional life into my personal life for books that have meaning for me because to be perfectly honest my professional reading even though it's interesting and important for my work is not what I gravitate towards like I don't pick those up and go oh this is how I'm going to spend my fun afternoon not saying that those books aren't great but just I would rather read a fiction book than a non-fiction book that's my preference so I'm just sort of transferring skills from one to the other as to why I moved from just using page flags into actually physically writing my books it's fun and what you'll probably notice is that I tend to do it for books that I love or authors that I love. They're intrinsically books I know I'm going to keep for a very long time. They're an artifact, they're part of my reading history, and they're something that is really important to me. That's why I don't just physically annotate every single book that I read. One, it would take too much time, but some books are just books that you read and you enjoy. They don't have to have that personal intrinsic meaning to you. I don't necessarily want to annotate those. It's not a reflection of the book at all, because I can read a book and rate it five stars and not want to annotate it. But if there is a book that just has such deep personal meaning for me or something that I absolutely loved and I just constantly come back to time and time again, having an annotated copy of that is just like creating an artifact that someday someone is probably going to find and read and, and know that this book was important. So I don't know if that articulates clearly <laughs> why I annotate, but that's sort of the thoughts that are going on in my head when I think about annotating. And I have been annotating books with page flags for years and years. I go through page flags like nobody's business. And of course, there have been points where I have unhauled books and I've had to sit there pulling out a hundred page flags from a book because I'll mark any book that I'm reading with page flags. I don't care about that because some things you never know whether you're going to keep them or not. Some, some you do know, but sometimes it's just a book that you read and go, yeah, this is great. And then a couple of years later you go, you know what, that book was part of that time in my life and, and that's fine. And then I have to sit there and take out page flags when I donate them. So like, there is that trade off. But for the most part, my process has stayed very similar. And I think as I move into talking about how I annotate, I need to talk about what I use for annotating because that is a really important part of the process. So what do I use? Page flags. Lots and lots of page flags. So at a very basic level, I started off with these page flags, which were page flags that I could find at local stores really easily. They're very cheap. And now I just get bulk orders of them from Amazon. I think I get them in packs of 10. They last for ages. I like the consistency of colors. Like these are the most common ones you can get, which is why I buy these the most. And if You've seen any of my videos where I talk about these books, particularly in books like the Psy Changeling series where I have used tabs all the way through. I have a very specific color code for them. And these are really the only page flags at the moment that I do have a specific color code for. So we have quotes, we have real world social political issues, 
representation, anything like that, that's sort of, I want to keep track of either because it might be a content warning or it might be a, a trope or a keyword or something that's going to be useful for other people. I tend to mark it with orange. Yellow is relationship development. Green is plot. Blue is anything that made me feel something, whether I cried, I laughed, whatever, that's blue. Light purple is anything to do with character information. So character history. This is really important in series for me, particularly something like Slay Changeling where I'm tracking a lot of characters and trying to learn more about them. And then purple is the only one that varies and that depends on what's what I'm actually annotating. But if it's a series where we have multiple couples, but there's a few characters that are favorites of mine, I use that to track favorite characters as they pop in and out of series. Sometimes it can be specific characters in that book like side characters that I find really interesting. So I separate out the two purples. It kind of depends. So like this is the only floating color in here, but I typically sort of write down what I use it for so that I can remember when I come back to it. So that's my standard fluoro page flags. And I know that people like aesthetically pleasing pastel page flags and whatnot. And I do have those, but I will always come back to these because I can get them the most. I go through these so fast. And sometimes in books, I need to replace single colors as I'm going, depending on the length of the book. So I need to have easily accessible multiples of these ones when I'm color coding like this. I should say they also come, so you have the pointed ones, you also have the flat ones. I don't really care which ones they are. That doesn't bother me. I do have two slight variations on those. There are these ones which have the light pink, the pastel pink instead of the dark purple. And there are these ones that have the red. I can get these in bulk, but because I have such an established color code system, I tend to use these just to backfill where I'm missing things or if I need a specific red because red is really hard to, to come by. The other thing I will say with the red is that the red is red like this on one side, but it is a different color on the back. So when you are putting it on the page where you see the back of a page flag, it does look different if you're using it for an aesthetically pleasing sort of look. And there's also these skinny ones, which I don't really use in my fiction books, but I will use when I'm taking notes for my nonfiction texts. Then there are these assorted page flags. These are sort of the pastels and the blues and the, you know, aesthetically pleasing colors. Lots of people like to use these. I will use these for standalone books or books where I am not necessarily using a color code system, but I might be matching these to covers. For example, when I read Before Girl, I, I don't know if you can see that. I sort of did a, an ombre light to dark red system down the side of the page. So I might have been tracking relationship development quotes, etc. But I didn't color code them. I literally just tabbed to make it look aesthetically pleasing, which is also a thing to do. These can be useful for that because you probably aren't going to use as many if you're not doing a really in-depth annotation process because yeah, you will run out of colors. And what I tend to do with these as I'm going is I will mix and match. And so I just have, this is a little plastic ruler, but sometimes I just keep empty backings of these and I will just mix and match colors from multiple sheets and just sort of create a color code. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is if you are someone who does want to write in your books, but you don't want to actually write physically on the pages, you can get transparent sticky notes and you can write on them and you can stick them in your book. You can buy them in bulk packs and they can be really useful if you want to write, but you don't want to write in your books, but you still want to be able to see the text. So you can quite literally stick these over the top of text like this and you can write on it. And you can write on it and then you can pull it out. So these can be really useful if you are a bit anxious about actually writing in books. And that's fine. No one is saying you have to write in books, which I suppose leads me into the pens that I use. I tend to gravitate towards two types of pens. The first is my absolute favorite pen of all time. This is the Uni Jetstream in 0.7. I love this in black. It is my favorite pen ever. It is the most comfortable pen to write with. It is so smooth. The other one that is really smooth is the Papermate Inkjoy. This is the one. I don't actually know if they make these in a smaller nib. I should find out because these are super smooth to write with. So absolutely gravitate towards these for everything in my life. Like everything in my life runs around pens like these and it makes sense that they would in annotating. The other thing that you could use is a Sharpie Fine pen. This has a super fine nib, which would be great, but you just need to check whether or not it bleeds through certain pages, which is why I just tend to stick with sort of 
ballpoint pens. Then there are highlighters that you can use. So you might be writing in books, but you could also highlight in books. And I started off by getting these, I think they're called Bible highlighters because they don't bleed through Bible pages. These are pastel colors. You can buy them in a set. I'll leave them linked down below. The only thing I will say about these is you have to swatch them. They don't have any identifying information on here and the color that they are may not necessarily represent the color that it actually comes out. So swatch them. And then when I was using these to annotate a book, I actually wrote the color because I was matching these to my color coded system. So I actually wrote down which colors I was using for which so that I didn't grab the wrong one because this was the light purple and this was the dark purple. But this to me reads more blue on the, on the casing than it does purple. So I had to write that it was specifically purple because otherwise I would have gone to this one and this did not match at all. So if you are someone who needs to match, just label them. These are great though, but they are very pastel in color. My newest highlighter purchase and the one that I used in my last annotation vlog were these ones. So these are the mild highlighters. They're from Shuttle Art. There are 18 colors, which is great value. And I mostly use these colors here because these perfectly match my highlighting system. But I do like that you have these other options and these would match some of the other page flags that I have. So I found these to be great, very little bleed through on the pages that I was highlighting, unless you kind of go over it. These have worked really well and I will leave these linked down below. I've got all of these off Amazon. The other thing that you might like to have on hand, and this is something that I always forget to do at the start and then end up using halfway through the book because <laughs> my, uh, my perfectionism kicks in, and that is to have some kind of ruler if you're underlining things. If you don't care, and usually, like for the most part, I don't care, but then I start ruling things and then I realize it looks so much nicer because my hand shakes a lot. But if you want to have a nice ruled edge, just use the edge of one of your page flag cards. It's good enough and it bends. So particularly if your book is not super floppy and doesn't sit open and you kind of need to hold it open, this can kind of bend with the pages so you still get a straight line. Uh, but that can be really useful. And then if you're using page flags, you've already got a ruler handy and you don't need anything extra. All right, for the people who are interested in where I actually keep my supplies it's at the bottom of my tbr trolley and yes this is the state that it is normally in i wish i could say i am far more organized than this but i'm really not so my tbr cards kept in the front i have managed to put all of my original highlighters into a mug just inside this little uh stationary organizer bag all of the post-it notes are here usually just so i can grab them because i literally sit on the couch to the left of the screen so there's all sorts of things in here if you put your post-it notes are in there it's just a very handy space to keep everything at the moment the highlighters are on the couch but normally i would just shove them in here as well so it's just a great place to keep them so i can grab them whenever i need them so that's my what and i will as i said i'll leave everything linked down below and then it really becomes my how how do i annotate how does it even work again i will direct you to the playlist with my videos because you can see what i do i do talk a little bit more specifically about specific books and the process for those books but in general i kind of have different levels so at the most basic level i just annotate with page flags so this was the seven year slip i read this recently for a vlog for this one i did have a color coding system but I kept it super simple. I used three colors. I used yellow, red, and blue to match the cover of the book. So it was kind of a cross between color coding and just aesthetically pleasing. I suppose I should probably start here because this is really the most basic level where I don't actually care about the, the color coding. So, and I just pick tabs to match the cover and I just mark anything that I feel like. So that's probably level one or level 1A. Level 1B would be this one where I do assign colors, but it's a very minimal color code. And this is a standalone contemporary romance. So I don't need to track things that like that I would in a series. So in this one, blue was quotes, yellow was important information, plot, character, etc., and red was the relationship. So it was a really, really simple color code. So you can go just aesthetically pleasing, you can go basic color code. The Charm Offensive was another one where I matched the colors to the cover. I just had two colors and I just sort of did top half was this goldish yellow color, bottom half was this pinkish color. Or well, then you come to something like Pucking Around, which is a series, but I'm not necessarily tracking things series-wise. I'm just tracking things in the book. This is usually what my brain does, particularly with a book I love. I end up with two packets worth of page flags basically being used here. Actually, no, that's probably a lie. This is not quite two packets worth. And for this one, I do use my standard color code, the one that I talked about earlier, where my fluoro tabs have meaning. And that's why I prefer to use the fluoro tabs because something like this happens. But to be fair, this does make it a lot easier when I'm looking for things. So you guys know that in my book journaling, I include my favorite quotes. I always start by just looking at the pink tabs. If the pink tabs don't appeal to me, 
because even though you know I might highlight a quote sometimes it doesn't just stand out to you as something you want to put into your book journal I will then go to blue pink then blue is generally my order of preference for finding quotes because sometimes it's the emotional quotes that's, that resonate with you and you want to document sometimes the pink quotes are just good quotes that sounds like I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing but it makes sense in my head the rest of the story is another one that I have a whole lot of tabs in and every time I read it I kind of add a few more to it this is my non-physically annotated copy so this is my page flag copy I have one that I have written in which is going to be traveling to some friends overseas and they are going to write in it for me and then it's going to come back to me and so then I'll have two copies that one does not have the page flags in it it may have page flags when I get it back and I reread that copy because I might document some things in there in a slightly different way which would kind of be an interesting video to do this one with the physical annotation vlog for this I do have in the playlist so you can see how I actually annotated that copy another way that I used my fluoro tabs was in this anthology and I I really like this for annotating an anthology so what I actually did at the start I don't know if you can see down the side but there are actually two rows and I went through and I in rainbow order tabbed all of the short stories in this collection so I went in the order of the fluoro tabs and just went down the side of the book and then as I was reading so for example Emily Rath's lemongrass story is the first one it was a pink tab and then anything that I marked in that short story, I used a pink tab for. Same thing for the next section, if it was orange and I marked something, I used orange tabs. That really worked for me. Like that was a new thing that I tried and I found that really useful. And then I did do that with Worthy, which was another anthology I read recently where I just marked up the short stories on the side and then used the colors. So I think for anthologies, this is gonna kind of be my new go-to because I think it works. Okay, so that's sort of my basic level, just page flags, nothing else. The next step up from that would be highlighting and I would do that in conjunction with my page flags. So this is With You Forever, which I actually have physically annotated. So I'm just gonna use this as an example because I, I have not yet done a highlighting without an annotating. If I have a yellow page flag, I have a yellow highlight. And if I have a purple one, I put in a page flag. Sometimes I don't put the page flags in and that's totally fine. And particularly on this read through of the book, which is my third read through, there are other things that I notice and I'm like, I, I just want to highlight it because it'll stand out to me when I'm flipping through the book, but I don't necessarily need a page flag for it. So that was my highlighting and is really useful for those really powerful impactful quotes and things that stand out or in terms of identifying representation just really great to see that as you quickly flip through the book because that can help you stop and go okay hang on that that's where I need to go which then leads us into actually writing in our books so all writing on those clear sticky notes so again in with you forever I used a combination of highlighting and underlining and quotes I've also done drawings inside my pages I'm not a drawer by any means I I can doodle but yeah drawing is 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 not the thing that happens for me sometimes my thoughts don't accompany a page flag or a quote or an underline or anything it's just a random thought that I have the very first book that I physically annotated was from a certain point of view which is the short story Star Wars collection. And this one was a bit of fun because I actually took quotes from inside the text and I actually rewrote them and, you know, did some fancy font. I did underline in this one. I was using page flags. I have a lot of snarky comments, like that explains a lot. That's just the way that my brain works. I'm trying to find other examples. Like this one I had a lot of fun with and I did the same with the second book in the series and I do have the third one from uh, for Return of the Jedi and I will be doing the same thing for that. So yeah. Just lots of thoughts going in the sides. And then we have something like the Psy Changeling series, which is honestly just, <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. And I did have to explain <laughs> to Nalini Singh what the hell I was doing. And pretty much anyone who saw these books were like, you, you need to explain this. So in this series, I'm pretty sure for memory, the first one I annotated was Heart of Obsidian. So this one actually doesn't have any highlighting. It's just underlining and thoughts and quotes. I think I used a couple of different pens through this one. Actually, no, because I've annotated this twice. So the first time I did it, I used one pen and then the second time I used a different pen. So you can tell sort of where I was adding things. So lots of notes in the margins, lots of commentary. It doesn't have to be, you know, deeply insightful. Sometimes it's just a totally agree or hilarious or 
Yeah, that, as I said in the Star Wars one, that sounds about right. Caressed by Ice is another one. This one doesn't have highlighting, but it does have a lot of just random thoughts scribbled through it. Alpha Knight was the first one that I started highlighting in, but you can see I used the Bible highlighters for this, so it's really, really light. But this one was a book where I did do some doodling in it and I did a chapter decorative element because in this one they're sleeping out under the stars and that just, you know, made me really happy. Oh, something I forgot to show you in With You Forever, which I haven't really done in any other books, is I actually wrote a reflection at the end of one of these chapters and I have seen a lot of people who summarize at the end of chapters but in this case it was reflecting on why one of the main characters was so important to me and some of the things that I've realized about myself over time and just to write that out was really cathartic and you know this is a copy I'm going to keep forever and to have my thoughts at this point in time after reading it multiple times and recognizing that this character is really important to me it was it was just a really nice experience while I was doing it and so I you know I found that to be really great and then I guess the last sort of step in annotating which is not something that I do but I've seen plenty of people do it is actually physically illustrating the book so going beyond my little do Doodles, actually putting in lots of pictures or using markers or things like that like there are so many really creative people out there who really enjoy that style of annotating and I think it looks amazing I, I'm not yet at that level of commitment <laughs> to doing it mostly because like I don't I don't know what I would I would draw so if the if the moment strikes like the little star heading or the little sunflower or something like that I can draw those in no problem, but doing that consistently is is a skill that I, I do not possess right now. But yes, that is my annotation process. I'll do some flip throughs and, and show you some specific examples from the books that I've got here. <laughs> definitely check out the vlogs. I will be committing to doing one every month for the foreseeable future. I have a whole stack of books 
that I love that I would really like to annotate. They're currently all on these little scratch TBR cards. So this was the one for With You Forever, which was for this month. And every month I'm choosing a card and that's the book that I'm gonna annotate. Uh, there's a couple of series that I want to get to so I will go through the Green Creek series and I will physically annotate that. Hopefully this answers people's questions and you know if you want to know more feel free to ask questions in the comments. I'll leave links to everything that I use down below. I find it a really interesting process when you're reading physically. It does take a lot longer to read a book which is not always what I'm interested in doing. I like to read very quickly so I have to be in the mood to sit down and annotate which is another reason why it probably has to be a book that I really love because it takes a lot longer to to read the book but I do find it worth it and yes I do annotate on my kindle I just highlight I don't color code or anything I just literally highlight everything because if you're on a device if you're not on a kindle you can choose different colors but I don't bother with that I just I highlight anything that I find interesting but it tends to just be quotes rather than everything else that I track if I love a book that I read digitally I will probably buy a physical copy of it to annotate in the future so that's why I tend to purchase quite a few of the ebooks that I do read. That process is much simpler because it's it's not as in-depth as what I do physically. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I would love to chat to you about book annotating in the comments so feel free to leave a comment or just leave me a pen emoji if you just want to let me know that you're here. I hope that wherever you're on the world you're staying safe and healthy and I will see you in my next video. Bye everyone.